Hi everyone, Amanda here, and we are going to take a look at the Craft with Heart cards from January to April 2021. Just showing you kind of the supplies that you need, the envelopes, the stamp set that you just saw, the instructions, the card bases, um, the flower um, confetti, there's a block and a, um, a small square of black ink that all come in the kit. So if you're one of the subscribers, you received that already. I'm adding some other things to it. One of the things I did was I went through, um, I believe it was Flower Market. It might have been Art, um, art Philosophy. And I cut some extra pieces to kind of add emphasis, embellishments, kind of just jazz up the Craft With Heart cards, kind of personalize and make them my own. If you want that design space file, it is, the link will be in the description and you can just click over there and the cuts will be there. Um, I think if you cut everything times two, uh, you will get all that you need to embellish all your cards. So again, just showing you some of the tools that I thought that I would use. I grabbed a, um, a better block, easier for me to hold than the small ones. And I'm actually, I donate all the small ones to um, a friend whose daughter-in-law is a nurse and does kind of social service work in her county. So, all right, so this is card one. And I won't show you me separating all the supplies for future cards because I just do the same thing. Um, and then I just pop one in the envelope. But you guys, when you create them, you can do both of them at the same time. I just didn't want to um, take the time to do it all today. I wanted to get this video out for you. So this is a shaker card, and I love this paper. Those leaves are just gorgeous. Um, so some of the things that I'm going to remember on shaker cards <laughs> as I go, because I keep forgetting, and I do them different. All three cards with shakers that you'll see, I'll do them different. But... Each card, I look at what they had in the instructions, and then I look at what pieces I had decided to kind of throw with the card, and I do what I call a dry fit, so it gives me an idea of how I see the card and what direction I want to make it go. I did debate, I used up the last of my black shimmer trim, um, and if I had had some, I think I would have added it into the mix of extra supplies. But right now I'm just using the Bluebell ink. I'm not, I didn't grab a, a green, I just grabbed the Bluebell. And I'm um, just kind of inking up the spots, especially on the top part of that leaf where it cuts out the vein. Uh, there's a lot of white tips showing. And so I wanted to kind of cover those up. And also it gives the leaf um, a richer feel to it because you've added some color doing the edges of the sentiment. And I believe when I stamp this sentiment, I actually stamp it off to the left because when I had done my dry fit, I put the heart to the right and I wanted to make sure that the extra heart I added to this card didn't um, interfere with the message. The other thing that you might notice is I did, these are brand new stamps, so I kind of um, rub it on my arm to get the like the manufacturer's film off of it it gives you a cleaner stamp set. Oh, that trick that you just saw with the piercing tool to kind of run the edges really makes a difference. Um, I can pull that foam for the shaker card off and it doesn't get distorted or, or bent because the foam will pull just like plastic. And then you saw that I added some glue dots to capture some of the confetti so that when the card is stood up, there's actually still some in the top, of, top, the upper part of the heart. And the other thing I did is last time the card subscription came with the silver stars and I added those in the mix because I had some left. So that was just kind of, you know, using up what I had gotten last time. And then here's the top frame that kind of hides all the mechanisms of the shaker card. And the kind of the flower, looped flower or looped leaves that are there on the card base, that's in the silver paper. And in real life, it's just stunning. I do have all of these cards at the end. I just took some photographs and um, did real 
close-ups of them. So if you want to just jump to the end and see the cards, you can do that. And it's just a matter now of assembling all the parts. You can see how that heart, if I hadn't stamped the image off to the left, really would have blocked more of that sentiment. So, And then I will, I believe I stamped the inside, and I also stamped all the envelopes. To me, that just kind of completes the whole look. Just find some image that works with... Um, the card and stamp the envelope kind of give them a a taste of what they might see inside so I was thinking about using the center of the heart from the frame on the inside of the card and it just it's too um, loopy of a heart for me I guess I'm getting more of those and I think if they were like folded in half almost like a heart butterfly effect it would be really cool so um, as I assemble the other 12 cards, I might go ahead and make a um, butterfly heart card. And if I do that, I will be sure to post that on my blog with these cards. So that's the other thing is you can go over to craftingwithamanda.com and on my blog, it will have all of the uh, card photos. So this is card number two. Again, I'm just kind of doing my dry fit. I cut these, like I'll call them a pansy with a center, um, out of Ballerina, I believe was the cardstock color. And because one side of our cardstock is the true color and the other side is kind of a generation, like a, a watered down generation of the same color, I could just cut front and back. And if you do use the design file, um, it's already set up so that it's reversed. So all you have to do is cut the one sheet of um, ballerina or whatever color you choose and you will have one piece for the back that's face up and one piece for the front piece that's face down so you get those two tone of um, cardstock. And circles are circles. You can use whichever side you want. I do believe that on this particular flower I ended up flipping the circle over because I had inked it from the wrong side for the color difference that I wanted. Yep, I realized here, so. Um, and I'm just using the center of those shaker heart foam and I'm popping that up on there. And I give it a little time to dry. The video is sped up so you don't really get to see that the two layers had time to dry, but they do because it makes it easier to shape when they're together versus trying to shape them separately and add them together. So then on this piece of the, you know, the punch out that comes with the kit, I didn't know where the flower was in relation to the leaves. So from the front, I traced just the outline of the flower. And now from the back, I'm um, denting it. And the pad that I'm using is actually a really old thing that came from um, Stampin' Up. It, it had like this foam mat and a, um, a cutting mat and, and everything in it. But it, it, basically has the consistency of a thick mouse pad and I just I like the size it works really well for me so I added some more foam tape and the feel of this element and any of the elements actually that I did it um, it's almost like a puffy cardstock feel and it just it gives more interest to the card in real life it's um, it's not subtle in the camera here it's subtle but in real life, when somebody gets the card, it, there's a big difference between um, the elements that have been dry embossed and those that haven't. You can see it with the center of the flower um, and that the, you know, the edges are curled up. So, And I love these reversible, reverse squeeze tweezers because it just holds things in place. I use the shimmer brush on this card and I think this is one of the few cards that I actually use the shimmer brush on. Um, I don't know if I just wasn't in that mode or the cards. Um, there's just still a lot going on in my world, but I, I didn't end up using the shimmer brush, but feel free to embellish your cards and add that um, to your heart's content. And what I'm doing with this leaf is I ink it up and then I kind of um, lightly drag it across the top of the ink pad, which gives it this lined look. 
Um, so it's not just pure solid image, it's a lined look, and I really like that. All right, so now we are moving on to the next card. And I, I won't, I forgot to say that this is a long video, but I do all 12 cards Amanda Eyesed. Um, so I, it, it's going to take a while for you to, to walk through all of them. But um, if you want to create these while watching, just pause the video, do the next step. Pause the video, do the next step. Um, this card I decided, I think this was exactly how the instructions had it. I'm going to look that up. Yes, and I figured this is great timing. Um, unfortunately, a gentleman in our church's father passed away, and I need a sympathy card, so I will be sending this one out right away. I did manage to take photos of it this morning to add to the end of this video, so it can now, I can write my message and send it out in the mail. The yellow um, frowny thing, um, kind of feathery looking, I love those. Those are from the Cricut Serenity collection, and it's only $9.99 um, for the Cricut set, and it has an amazing, like, the leaf in it. It has a rose with rose leaves in it. Um, I think the, the big petals here that have the veins cut out of the center is also from that Cricut collection, and I absolutely love it. Maybe I did all the cuts from the Serenity collection, but like I said, it's only $10, and I really like the... They kind of remind me of feathers, but they're not. It's almost like a, a field grass. We had a farm, and so for us, it was kind of like um, called foxtail. So I know little pieces of information that you never need to know. <laughs> And I pulled out an old stamp set um, to get the, the sympathy saying that I wanted for the inside of this card. So there we go there. And I'm just going to ink that up again. Um, season the stamp sets. This is all Bluebell ink. Kind of to bring the front of the card to the inside. You could easily do it in black, but since it had such a big portion of the Bluebell color on the front, I just thought that would work well. And I did match up my envelopes with my cards so that I would know that I had the right combination. Later on, I think card 10, 10 or 11, excuse me, I actually swapped for a white envelope and took the pink envelope that I had originally paired with it and added to my stash. And that'll get sent out probably for Valentine's Day. So here I'm, I'm even using the center from the leaf. You saw that little frond that I put in the middle of the two? That's actually the vein from the center of the leaf. So I, I use everything and it really gives it interest. I don't ink those. Um, I think the little white tips kind of give it um, a more natural feel. So now I'm picking my sentiment and I always need thank you cards if you watched anything. Um, I always need thank you cards because I send them quite frequently. In fact, I have 200 stamps arriving this week. Um, I just order them from USPS, but, um, cause I am out or no, I have one stamp set left that I'm going to use to pay the, our power and water bill. <laughs> so, oh, I did use shimmer brush on the centers of these, I'll call them, um, posies or poppies actually just it really um, brightened up or livened up the center of the printed flowers. Again, just adding some uh, ink with the brush on the outsides and the insides of these leaves. And I did not do the vein um, from the leaf. You'll notice that, that I just did the top and bottom of the leaf and the uh, outline of the stack of leaves. Oh yeah, see, I'm using the shimmer brush again, but this time I'm going to use it on the sentiment. And I, I'll have a, I think I, yeah, there is a close up of this at the very end after the card number four. So you can see exactly what um, it looks like close up. It gives it some richness, but it also um, gives it a little sparkle because it has that shimmer in. <laughs> Funny of all things, the name of the shimmer brush. <laughs> So again, I'm just giving some dimension by doing the dry embossing on these flowers, add some foam tape, and then 
going to assemble and glue everything down. So pretty straightforward on this. And I don't know if you noticed, but I used the foam tape. I put it kind of around the edges of the flower so that the center can go in. And I did put a dot of glue on the inside of the flower. That's a lot of times why I use the tweezers is to hold the center of the flower down um, so that before the glue dries, the pop dots don't bring it off the front of the card. I'm using this old stamp set. I think it was from Treasures, um, but it was a really old, it was an old and much loved stamp set. So, and this is another variation of doing the first generation and then the second generation with the leaf. I don't recommend dropping the stamp on the envelope, but you know, you do you. <laughs> um, and I decided to kind of coordinate the front and the back to go ahead and add some letters on the inside. So these are options that, you know, I'm trying to give you um, thoughts for how you want to create your cards. Again, this is going to be a shaker card. I like that daisy. It's just so sweet. Um, white flowers with yellow centers to me just bring a smile. It's just, they're so, I don't know, unassuming. <laughs> and I drew a line just a sixteenth of an inch above the bottom of the line of this heart border and um I wouldn't do it again because it just it felt messy it wasn't even and it was difficult so now I'm gonna try to hide that and then I realized I was doing my shimmer brush wrong as I was hammering the shimmer brush instead of um, making the shimmer brush splatter against the embossing stylus, but you know, sometimes we have off days. Again, I need a sentiment for the center of the heart. You can kind of see the shimmer brush splatters on the inside of the heart. I will again, um, I'm sure make some glue dots so that some of the confetti, the flower confetti stays higher in the heart. And again, take the piercing tool and I just kind of release the glue so it's not holding to anything else on that um, sheet with all the other foam. Excuse me, I couldn't think of the right word. And I, I highly recommend leaving the, um, the cover for the adhesive on until you're ready to put the acetate on it and, and not have it exposed like I did on this card. I remembered when I was editing the videos, I'm looking at all the little things. It's like, okay, well, that wasn't the smartest thing to do there, Ross. So, <laughs> um, but I did remember to make sure which side had the protective film. And I started that before I glued it down, peeled that off. And you do want to peel that off before you put the um, border, the outline heart, hiding all the mechanisms or the whole thing just peels right off. So. And look, the heart hid the blemish, so we have no issues. I'm doing each little petal, then I'll turn it over and kind of push the center down. It just gives it some life. The heart, I'm just going to make into a puffy heart by doing the inside, adding foam dot to it, and, um, and now I have a little puffy heart. So these are all really easy things that don't cost any more money, but can take a card from, oh, that's a nice card to wow, this card kind of comes to life. There's some other techniques that you can do that I always used to call over the top cards and my uh, monthly club gals, they, um, they didn't always appreciate the over the top cards because they were fussy and they liked the results. They didn't necessarily enjoy the process of getting to the results, but I only do that a couple times a year. So if you are interested in, um, seeing more about our monthly club cards, you can join Crafting with Amanda VIP group on Facebook. And I will try to remember to put that link in the description. Um, it's just a great group of, so far it's only gals. I'm not opposed to men in the group, but so far it's only gals. And um, just affirming and uplifting. And we celebrate people's um, crafting triumphs. We celebrate people's life triumphs. Um, 
We, you know, pray for those that are having difficulties. So there's been a lot of praying this year. <laughs> um, again, this is the next card and I'm just adding some dimension with the dry embossing. Um, and I'll add some foam tape just so that it stays nice. And if you didn't pick up on that, I always try to stamp with that piece of foam that comes with the stamp sets underneath. Um, I thought that would be easier than flipping my Versamat, which is the black grid you see underneath. The back side of it has a nice cushion that you can use for stamping, but it's a little more difficult to flip that for every card. So I'm just using the foam from the stamp set, which works great. I think it's not quite as good as the back of the Versamat, just because it's thin um, or thinner, but just with a little extra care and not much, you can get a really nice solid image. So where are we at? Again, just uh, using the foam tape from one of those hearts from the shaker card pieces and uh, filling in to give some depth. And I don't fill in the whole thing because I do want it to have some ups and downs and, and a more natural look. On the banner, the just a note, I could use more because I don't need it to have ups and downs. Um, I'm, I'm working on that. That's just a, a frugal habit that I have had for years and years and years. But um, sometimes you need to have form or maybe um, I can put some cardstock back there. I apologize for the glare from the silver. Uh, again, with lights on the camera, it's not pretty, but in real life, it really just jumps off the page so and again those cuts are all in the design file so have fun with that now we're just gonna stamp the inside you guys are probably um, well on board of what we're gonna do in here a leaf with a light drag and I apologize that the bottom of the card is off camera um, I had set up my camera all correct and I remembered after as I'm editing the video that um, I had a child come in and bump the camera set up and I just put it back and I forgot to check um, if it was tilted correctly so you get more of the top of my versa mat than the bottom like and I normally work closer to the bottom as you can see so again we are moving on to the next card I love this leaf background I think we need to have a paper pack that has that because it's just gorgeous so we're already halfway through. This is card number seven. I chose the stamp, the sentiment that they recommended, um, which is wonderful. It says, oh no, I didn't. I changed. You're the best. You're, you're kind of the best ever. Again, because I need my thank you cards. And um, the inside from an old stamp is, and I think it's from Kindness set, is there is no greater gift than friendship. There was another one on that kindness stamp set about friends and um, if you look at this set those are the most used loved stamps on that whole set I used to love that set because it could make like these little one inch it had like little one inch stems and then three or four different flower tops that you could put on them so you could make some really quick um, stamped cards and just you know whip them out get them in the mail and it just sent a smile. So those were always fun. These tags come with the kit. I added the two um, stalks of, um, I don't know what you would call them. I, you know, again, for me, it's, it's the foxtail. <laughs> um, so just inking up the leaves to hide some of the white core. Uh, again, the front and the back. The, the back doesn't need a lot, just kind of enough to give it some depth. I didn't do anything on the foxtail and I didn't do anything on the center um, vein that came out of the bigger leaf. And because I had put the glue too close to the edge and I wanted my tags to be staggered, not the same height, I just cut off the bottom of the bluebell tag and um, dropped it in. Again, in hindsight, if I would have gotten out my silver thread, I could have, and I got it out to do the 
the tops of the tag, but I actually think it would have been cute to wind it around the tag. Um, I just think that would have been another nice little element. So, Or you can always do uh, some loops of it, tuck it in behind the greenery, and that also would give it some, um, some interest, something different to look at. So we're just going to place these tags and you can do yours however you want. You could also take a little um, sentiment or flower or even a leaf and stamp it on the blue tag. Um, I ended up adding some of the flower confetti kind of scattered along the bottom edge just to give it a little something of interest and you can again choose to do this or not. I'm just when I'm creating these cards, I'm trying to do various techniques or ideas so that you can decide what works for you and what you how you want to highlight um, these cards and make them your own so that they're not Amanda-ized, but they're you-ized. <laughs> I really do like how the center of the leaf, the veins, just it give it such a depth. So be sure to go look at that photo from card four at the end because you can really see it there. I think I ended up losing some footage so um, I forgot to press, press record so at the very end you didn't get to see me gluing down the um, flower confetti but at, you could see it on the card. So we must be to card number eight. Again, oh, this paper is gorgeous. I love the color combination and you can do it whichever way you want. I stamped it thinking it was going to be a top fold card. And then when I looked at the flowers printed on the front and you know, the recommendation in the guide, it's actually a side fold card. So, um, I changed that my leaf being, um, a 90 degree turn on the inside. Thankfully it's not a flower, so it shouldn't matter. And whoever receives it, if they notice that, um, Maybe it'll give them a reason to write me back. <laughs> what do you think? Again, hear me with my thank you cards. And I don't remember what that's from the, the card kit. So um, I really like the script to that. Thank you so much. This is a, a card kit stamp or a sentiment stamp that I think will get a lot of use in the future in my studio. Inking, inking, inking. I probably could have edited the inking part out because you guys have seen all this or have a general idea. And for my next video, if I remember, I will do that. Only show it on a couple cards and then kind of through the magic of video, poof, those will be gone. Sometimes though, it's nice to see or if you're following along, it's a time for you to catch up on things. And you can just see on camera the two different colors. This time the back is the darker color and the front is lighter. So I think that makes it more difficult to show see the contrast. Made a circle around my center dot and puffed it up. I love doing that kind of a center dot on um, any kind of mum, whether it's a daisy or um, a sunflower or a true mum, um, the chrysanthemum. I just, I really like the look that taking a circle, rolling the edges over with the dry stylus really kind of bring the card to life. And now I'm just gluing everything down. And I try to keep the glue and adhesive to the centers of things, especially when I scrapbook to help um, or to allow me to tuck things in later, just like I did on the last card with that, um, those tags. If you don't have enough room, you can always cut them, but it's sometimes nice to just tuck them in. All right, card number nine. We are on the home stretch, last third, last third of the cards to do. This will be another shaker card, nice. not sure what I'm doing off camera. I'm probably cleaning the stamp set. So 
I have my um, stamp chamois to in a drawer to my right and um, I go and get it wet at the beginning of a crafting session where I'm stamping and it it stays great I just have a little plastic bowl that I put it in when I'm not using and it stays great in fact sometimes I can use it again the next day so you don't want them to be in an airtight container or you get a really nice smell you know think of a boys gym locker room with a bag that has been sitting in there for a couple weeks kind of smell <laughs> so don't keep the shimmer the chamois don't let them stay wet some of those confetti flowers were stuck together and um, so I was pulling those apart and again I had added a little bit of glue dots um, to keep some of the confetti higher in the heart I'm adding some of those silver stars that were left from the last club card or craft with heart cards I remembered to not peel the um, backing or the front off the adhesive until I was ready to put the acetate sheet on and so you know I can be taught or at least I can be taught that day I was making some of these recordings while I was on um, a zoom chat and craft and if you want to join those um, again that's through the crafting with Amanda VIP on Facebook the links are put put in there every Thursday from well the room is open like 7 a.m. Eastern time and then it doesn't close until um, later at night I want to say it's like midnight or 1 a.m. Eastern time which is 9 or 10 o'clock California time so they had this um, card kind of more centered and I think I ended up putting it off to one side more um, and they had this again which is funny thanks for everything and I just did um, the so full of love what is it I'm looking it up here can't find it oh full of love and then probably um, the thank you will go on the inside so oh just a note full of love just a note is that what I did crazy I should watch the screen because I totally missed that I like this look of kind of the slider on the um, the ribbon it's something that I think needs to be incorporated in some future projects I I really like that especially on scrapbook pages so I'm just filing this away there's so many things that we can do and I should make a list I saw a gal that made a list of all these different techniques or um, styles and then she literally would do <clears throat> excuse me a random number generator to pick three to five things that she was gonna do on her project and I will I think I'm gonna start my list of you know uh, sentiment or title on a ribbon I'm liking this idea I just hope that if I made the list and called it that that I would remember what I was referring to because I don't know about you but I can call it one thing one day and then read it you know two weeks down the road and go what did I mean by that <laughs> oh goodness all right card number 11 this is just fun I love the the blue green um, blue teal plaids in this I like bluebell to begin with this is the card that ended up with a pink envelope that I swapped for white so you will see that pink envelope disappear and when we're stamping on it voila it's white <laughs> and this has some of those silver embellishments again So I didn't truly dry fit but um, I'm not gonna veer much off of the original I think they ended up putting the circle in the center of the polka dot banner and I put it off to the side because I was using that silver um, kind of leaf flower rounded leaf open flower I don't know what you want to call it medallion 
Um, so I wanted to leave room for that. And boy birthday cards are something I need to have in my stash all the time. I have, it seems, more nephews than nieces, so... And this little star stamp is from the stamp set that has stars and I think it also has like a heart cluster. Oh no, it has these like um, line stars and then it has one small five pointed stars. So you can add those in there in the mix if you wanted, um, kind of as a feel of confetti on the paper. I just really like what the silver does to these cards. It just gives it, I don't know, a more elevated feel, I'll call it. But that could just be me, and I'm very partial to um, the silver and gold on cards. I think that really does add something. And you'll see that I pop dotted the um, little tiny sentiment birthday wishes, again, just to give some interest and shadows and something different on the cards. In hindsight, and I'll probably do it with my next set, I'll probably cut little banner ends so that birthday and wishes at the end of each of those words has the banner cut on it. Because I just think that would be, it goes with the banner that's at the top, it goes with the polka dot banner that's underneath the circle. I just think it would um, give it continuity. So with my next set, if I remember at the time I'm making it, that would be a good idea. All right, card number 12. And I wanted to show you that depending upon which way you put the card, either front or back, you can have pink on the top or yellow on the top. And originally I was going to do yellow on the top, but then with my um, foxtail yellow, I, I wanted it to contrast against the pink. So I went back to the original way they had it. I also did my butterflies a little differently and put my tab, I put it at the top of the sentiment square instead of off to the side. So just to give you more options, if you have this kit, um, you will have the instructions and you can see what they did, see what I did, and create your own. So I had a lot of fun doing these cards. Um, I'm always amazed that more people don't take advantage of these. They are such a good deal. I mean, for a homemade card with really, you wouldn't have to do a whole bunch of time effort. They're, they're very inexpensive. I get the year subscription and I think with everything that I figured out, including the, the blocks and, and all the non-consumable stuff you get, the cards come out to um, less than $1.85 a card. And I know you can buy cards at the 99 cent store and I know you can get, you know, some um, quick greeting ones for two bucks, but they're not to this level. And um, the stamp set alone, I didn't even take that out of the equation. I just, the cost divided by, you know, the 72 cards that you get in the course of the year and this is how much it comes out a card and they're always appreciated so my butterflies I always 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 like to have the wings um, bent up and so I'm I'm doing that and then I'm just kind of pressing the center of the wings to give it a little more roundedness um, just to I don't know make them a little more realistic and so I add on butterflies, pretty much all butterflies, I add foam tape to the wing and I add glue to the body so that the body is stuck down to the card, but the foam tape keeps the wings up off the card. And uh, so it just looks like it's getting ready to fly away. And the tweezers are excellent for holding those on. And I, like I said, I just had a lot of fun making these cards. Um, you can embellish with the um, shimmer brush. In fact, you know, these butterflies would be great with them. So here's card number one. 
you can see the shimmer on the flower there on card number two. All right, now that I'm seeing these, I think I might have to go back and add more shimmer because that just made a big difference. And you can see the close-up. So my puffed heart, kind of my puffed flower there. There's the confetti along the bottom edge. So these are all the cards. And again, just quick and easy. The design cut file for Cricut is out there. So you can just go and cut two sets and you'll have everything that you need to make them just like this. Have a great day. Here's where you can find me and there'll be photos on my blog. Blessings.